Most home security cameras do a good job of recording what's happening so that you can go back and look at it later. And a lot of them will even give you some sort of motion detection alerts. But what if your camera could actually understand what it's looking at? Today, we're gonna to teach this dual lens Reolink Duo 3 panoramic camera how to tell the difference between a pickup truck and a pizza delivery. This isn't just another security camera review. This is where home security meets AI. There are a lot of modern security cameras and smart doorbell systems that you can buy that advertise built-in AI intelligence. But what if I told you that you might be able to add AI-powered video analysis to the cameras you already own? For example, here's AI looking at an image from a nine-year-old ring stick-up camera and describing who's at the front door. From a nine-year-old camera. We didn't have all of this AI back then, but I can have that camera capture an image ship it off to a modern cloud AI service, and then get a detailed response back in just a few seconds. And I can ask it for any kind of assessment of an image it sees. Describe who's at the door. Are the trash bins out on the street? Are there packages on the front step? I've covered some of these AI home assistant automations in my last few videos, but today we're gonna to push the envelope even further and start using our cameras for vehicle detection and classification, and even ask for automatic license plate recognition if the image is sharp enough. And having a sharp image is key here. My nine-year-old ring stick-up camera is not gonna cut it for this task, so I'm using a Reolink Duo 3 16 megapixel dual lens camera instead. If you're in the market for smart home security cameras, Reolink makes some great equipment and it's integrated extremely well into Home Assistant. I'll include some links down below for the exact hardware and software I'm using here in this video. Now let's take a look at how to set this up. Okay, let's walk through this and set this up here. Uh, again, if you have not seen my previous videos on setting up the AI integrations with a Google Gemini, uh, go back and watch those videos. We're gonna assume you have this set up here. And then what I have here is I have a setup of looking out at the front driveway. There is nothing detected by any of the detectors, the animal, the person, the vehicle. And then you'll notice the intrusion area. So. The first three sensors on here, this is just part of the real link camera and how it works, is the entire field of view, if any people um, are seen anywhere. Since this is a suburban residential street, um, the person thing will trip a bunch of times or vehicles as people are just going about their day down there. So then I have what's called an intrusion area and that is drawn over the driveway here. So uh, I set that as my mechanism I'm gonna use to get an alert to go through and set this up. I also have set up an exclusion area inside of here so that I'm respecting my neighbor's privacy. I'm not recording them going about their day-to-day -day operations. So any motion that happens in this grade in area here is not going to go and get recorded at all by the camera. Nothing to the local drive, no alerts, no notifications, nothing like that. So this is kind of effectively the field of view. Um, and then this driveway has that intrusion zone set up on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start to build the automation here for this. And we'll start with a new automation. Now, normally when I set these things up, I start with the triggers. We talk about, hey, what's gonna trigger this off? I'm gonna actually hold off on that till the end. I'm gonna do this a little bit backwards. We're gonna actually start with the task here. So we're gonna use the AI task function and we're gonna ask it to generate some data. In your task name, you can just say identify vehicles. In the instructions, this is gonna be our prompt that will go and we'll talk about what we want it to do here. So this is something that's taken a little bit of fine tuning and tweaking as I've gone along on this. Uh, and you can work with this. I'll provide this prompt text down below in the description notes here uh, in a paste bin link. So you can kind of go and grab that. And then if uh, you know you need to adjust it for your field of view or vehicles or something like that, you can kind of go in and modify that here. But basically what I'm saying is to simply analyze the view. If there's no actual vehicle seen on the driveway, even though I have all those filters set up, I shouldn't see anything else there, but if there's nothing on the driveway, then respond no vehicles. Um, 
For each vehicle, I want you to describe it using the following attributes, color, make, model, year. If you're able to read the license plate, note the state that issued the plate, and then you're all characters on the plate that you're able to read. And then finally, any business or government logos. So your local pizza delivery or a FedEx truck or something like that. Um, I do note in here, since this camera has an infrared night mode, in the infrared night mode, everything basically kind of goes into a black and white and a grayscale kind of color. You're not gonna be able to determine the color, so I don't wanna hear there's just a bunch of silver or white or black cars out there. Um, in that case, I tell it to not attempt the color rendition overall. And then I ask it to format its response in a certain way. So start with the phrase AI vehicle analysis, then start a new line. For each vehicle seen, enumerate through all of those fields in the order listed above. Include one on each line. Um, if you don't know what it is, then just skip that field. Some, and I've found sometimes it's able to determine something, sometimes it's not, and, and sometimes it misguesses things. I'll show you there here. Um, do not include any other information in your response. For the license plate, if you're only able to make out some of the letters and numbers, try to use a question mark symbol for any character positions you're uncertain about. So that's it. And again, what's important on setting these things up is getting all the sort of the plumbing uh, working correctly back and forth. And then you can kind of come in and adjust this over time. As you see, it might be it makes mistakes or it just reads things you didn't expect it to. Initially, it was reading some cars on the street and describing those as well. I was like, okay, I'm putting the exclusion zones, but when I take that image, it's feeding that full image out there. And it said, sure, I'm gonna look at the cars that are on the curb here and tell you about those. So I had to turn that off. You need to go and select your entity ID. This is gonna be the Google task function. Again, if you haven't seen how this gets set up, my very first video in the series um, shows you how to go through and do that. And then we wanna say um, our response variable, uh, sorry, went out of order here. Uh, I need to pick my media. So this is where you actually select the camera feed that you want to use for it to do this assessment. So we're gonna go through, select a camera here and this is um, the front yard clear feed. Um, in the real link cameras, there's generally two video feeds. There's what they call a fluent and a clear. It's not the most intuitive to US English speaking uh, countries. Um, the fluent is kind of a low bandwidth connection. You just sort of generally need to see it. You don't need this full 16 megapixel real time image coming through. The clear is the full raw image. Mostly you want that for storing on the memory card inside of it. Um, if you're just looking at it on a screen, the fluent is fine, but I want this to do an assessment. I want it to read a license plate at 30 to 40 feet away and try to determine what it is. So I need this clear view overall. And then I'm just gonna say here, uh, vehicle assessment. And that's gonna be our first action. Now, once that is done, what I wanna do is I wanna create a persistent notification. This is just something that I do as sort of a debug, kind of a checkpoint to see how things work. And then I'm gonna go and say vehicle vehicle assessment dot data and you have to do the data at the end because that tells it I want to see the actual raw response that came back and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a notification to my mobile phone Let's say Gemini AI and then again with vehicle assessment.data. And that's it. That's really all you need for this script. So I needed to find that AI task. I need to pick the camera. I need to give it the prompt. And then I need to define that response variable that will store that response as it's being processed, as it comes back to the automation. And then while we still have that, that vehicle assessment response variable, I need to go and create the persistent notification, um, which is gonna show up down here in the notifications panel down the lower left. And then I also wanna send it to my phone. Now, this is incomplete because right now there are no triggers on this. So let's work our way back up. First thing to say, you could add a condition in here. Maybe you only want to get these alerts when you're away from home. So I have a entity called vacant. And I might go and say when the house is in fact vacant. That's when I want to know if somebody just pulled up in a car. 
Um, you could have, say, you know, only if it's overnight or something like that. And you can have copies of this automation, obviously, that would do different things based on different conditions. If it's daytime in your home, maybe you do one thing. If it's nighttime and you're asleep, if you're away. Uh, so you can kind of build a lot of these things here. But I'm just going to go ahead and remove this for now. So this will refire every single time this gets triggered. And so the trigger, when we go and think about how you're gonna go and determine, because you have to remember we're using a single image here. This is not a video feed, a live video feed we're passing up to an AI and asking it to watch the whole video and make an assessment. We have to pick a single moment in time and try to figure out, okay, this is a good moment. And when you look back at how we have the driveway here, oh, I have to save this first. Uh, we'll go back and we'll look at the view in here. Now, the vehicle that I'm driving that I'm using for this is a Jeep Gladiator. If you're not familiar with a Jeep Gladiator, it's basically a Jeep Wrangler where they put a truck bed on the back of it. So if you're looking at the vehicle from the side, it very clearly is a Jeep Gladiator because you can see the truck bed. If you're looking at the front of the vehicle, it might look like a Jeep Wrangler to an AI. If you're looking at the front of the vehicle, you can get a good view of the license plate. If you're looking at the side of the vehicle, you can't see the license plate at all. So it's really, really tricky to kind of figure out exactly what your timings are to go and say, okay, once you've seen this motion, this intrusion into the driveway space, uh, wait a couple of seconds maybe, and then go and capture that image and, and ship that off there. So we're gonna go and we're gonna test this out. And so what I'm gonna do is for my automation, I'm gonna go in and add in, I'm gonna go in and add this intrusion on here. So going from clear, there is no vehicle in the intrusion area, that driveway space. And I might say, we're gonna make it that you have to have something in there for three seconds. And that's the last piece that I need for this automation to work from start to finish. So when that intrusion area goes from clear, no vehicles there, to detected a vehicle there, and it stays in that state for three seconds, the rest of this automation will run, we'll generate our uh, image, we'll ship that off with the prompt to Google's uh, Gemini AI, and go ahead and say, uh, pass the result back to vehicle assessment, and then we'll take that vehicle assessment data, and we will post a persistent notification and we will send a notification to the mobile phone. So let me go and move the vehicle into the field of view and record that. Okay, so you saw me drive the vehicle in. Uh, I turned the driveway. Uh, I did point it a little bit towards the camera to give it a little bit better chance at the license plate recognition. Uh, and then you saw as I was in the car, it was maybe a five or 10 second delay before that alert came up on the iPhone. Uh, I had that message in there. And then you can see the same thing down here in the notifications panel. So we go ahead and we can kind of see all the detail in terms of it's a red Jeep Gladiator, the license plate, it's read that all. And you can see here now, um, there's this uh, vehicle in the intrusion area and that's all that's counted, but there is not a, a vehicle counted in the clear area, which would be this vehicle over here. So all in all, this just works really, really well. Um, I found a couple situations where it, it didn't work quite so well, um, primarily being the night view on this. Um, the shining lights on the license plate, there seems to be a lot of ref reflective material on those and that just all shines right back in the camera and it just washes out completely. So, uh, so far this is daytime only. That's a camera problem. It's not really an AI problem. There might be other solutions to that. 
in this read, uh, this read of the license plate is happening at a distance of about 36 to 40 feet away. So pretty good overall for free. And you can apply these techniques to almost any automation camera that you have that might be integrated into Home Assistant. You just gotta figure out that trigger that we were talking about. Do you catch the car when it's coming in sideways? Do you wait five or 10 seconds? Maybe the car is left by then. It's a little bit tricky when you're working with one single image, but this will get better over time and you'll be able to send multiple images or maybe even eventually video clips. Uh, and this is just gonna get more and more powerful over time. And there it is, descriptive AI alerts not just that there's a vehicle in the field of view, but what kind of vehicle is it is, as best as the AI can determine. Make, model, year, color, brand logos, and even license plate characters if the image comes in clearly enough. There are enterprise level video analytics systems that cost thousands of dollars to do this type of analysis, and modern AI is making this all practically free. I'll be doing a bunch more of these again soon, so if you wanna stay up to date on Home Assistant AI projects and camera reviews, Go ahead and click like and subscribe down below. And until then, we'll see you next time. Real Link makes some great cameras and it's extreme. Oh. Is this take five? I lost track.